All right, man. I wanted to bring you on because you have a lot of experience as a musician. And I wanted to ask you from your experience, how much are women attracted to musicians? Well, first of all, I wanted to thank you for having me on the podcast. You know, this is a great experience. So the first thing I want to say is, you know, unquestionably, hell yes. (laughs) <laughs> uh, women are definitely so. yeah women are definitely attracted to musicians mm-hmm. now if i can give you a little bit of background on my musical history i do many different things i am able to uh, play guitar i'm able to do drums and every now and then i do lead a choir but that's a little bit of a different topic okay so i've been playing guitar since 2006 so that's almost 18 years at this point Mm -hmm. and i've been playing drums ever since 2008 and that's been roughly like can i do math 16 years yeah 16 years somewhere (laughs) around there i got a degree for a reason uh but yeah women are unquestionably attracted to it and i do have a couple of stories associated with that yeah, yeah, I remember I saw you playing at um, at that one place, and I there were some some women in the crowd, and they were definitely I could definitely tell that they were um, they were attracted to you. Are there any notable stories that you have of when you realize you first realized that women were attracted to musicians? Yeah, definitely. So there's one particular story that really uh, comes to mind, and I had this one woman that I was talking to for probably an extended period of time, maybe, well, around a month. Let's mm-hmm. let's say something like that. We were dating. And I've never really played the guitar in front of her before. Mm-hmm. One night I decided to go over at her place. We we're going to try and watch a movie. And once we were watching that movie, I, I forget what the movie was, but at the very end of the movie, I told her, hey, listen, uh, why don't we, uh, why don't we just kind of lay low for the night and, um, you know, why don't I bring my guitar out and just play for you a little bit? And she's like, mm-hmm. oh, you play guitar. Uh. And after that, I'm like, well, yeah, I, I said, yeah, absolutely. So I bought my guitar into the apartment and I started playing for her. It just so happened to be one of my favorite, personal favorite bands, the Goo Goo Dolls. I played one of those songs for her and the thing that i remember about the situation is whenever you play guitar for women there's a certain smile that they give you that Mm -hmm. is almost like uh like wow like i was just serenaded to like this is something that you typically see in movies right right um and once I was finished playing that song, that's it. It happens every single time I play guitar for women. There's always a specific smile that they give you. That's like, okay, well, I want to try and learn a little bit more about this person. Consequentially, a couple of days after I was playing that song for her, she just so happened to be at her work, and that same exact song that I played for her came on the radio, and she ended up texting me, "Hey, I." I can't help but think that you played the song better than what the original studio version was. Wow. And of course, that's you know, awesome. that's, that's, that's complete that's just... BS, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, she has that halo effect, you know, from you played the drums, you know, you played the acoustic guitar, electric guitar. You're also, you also have a great voice. You're a good vocalist. <laughs> Thank uh, you. <laughs> out of all of these, you know, which of these do you think women are most attracted to? And I guess maybe not least attractive to, but maybe not women aren't as drawn towards. So this is a very interesting question because I personally think that it really does depend on which instrument you do play in front of women. Now, the story that I gave earlier about the woman smiling as I was playing the the guitar and playing this Goo Goo Dolls song, you know, That was a, honestly, is one of the most special experiences of my entire life. And it's something I will absolutely never forget. But if you say that maybe you play the drums or play the violin or the bass guitar, not saying that those instruments are any less sexier, but I truly think that whenever you watch the Hallmark Channel or whenever you watch uh, any sort of other 
Lifetime. <laughs> yeah, like Lifetime movie or something like that. Playing the acoustic guitar is absolutely romanticized to mm-hmm. a lot of these women. And they want to be – most women out there. I'm not saying all women. But most women out there like the idea of being serenaded to. Mm-hmm. If you're playing the drums, you're not exactly doing that. You're playing the bass or – the violin, you're not exactly doing that. Of course, it really does depend on whether you have a good voice or not. If you're able to carry a good tone mm-hmm. or whatnot. But um, what, in my personal experience, playing the acoustic guitar absolutely gives you some sort of a halo effect. And that's been extremely consistent with about four or five other women that I have talked to in my life. I mean, and there's this one... A woman in very recent times uh, that I was able to get a date with because she saw me playing the guitar. Now, this is mm-hmm. within the past uh, two or three months. Okay. But I was able to get a date with her because I was upstate. I was up on stage playing acoustic guitar completely by myself. Mm-hmm. And now this is me kind of like trying to read the room and maybe trying to read what she was doing, but I wasn't the one who approached her. She was approaching me. And as far as I know, she was interested in some of the stuff that I was doing. And then of course, Mm -hmm. a couple of weeks later, I was like, Hey, you want to go out on a date over here? And of course she said, yes. And uh, and I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say it was the greatest date in uh, the history of dates that I've had, but it, it really wasn't bad. It got you in the door. And I, I think that's the key. I feel like women from a, from like a biological standpoint, when they hear a guy play guitar, or a guy has a good voice for singing. They look at that from like a, you know, subconscious genetic level of like, Hey, if I reproduce with this guy, you know, my, my son or my daughter or the Absolutely. daughter is going to have that musical ability. So like women do like talent in that case, especially. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, One additional thing I wanted to say about playing the acoustic guitar, you don't necessarily have to be amazing at the guitar. Most songs out there are based on four chords. And if you're looking at a very basic song, a really good one that comes to mind is Don't Stop Believing by Journey, which is typically in the key of E major. You could transpose that to the key of C major, where you can play all first position chords, C to G to A minor to F major. And if, as long as you learn those four chords, you are able to play a ton of different songs out there, and you're able to at least impress some women out there. In fact, I would say you impress most women out there. I actually have a buddy of mine who, he's been playing guitar on and off, for the past, I would say maybe 10 to 12 years at this point. Mm-hmm. And he made an attempt to play guitar in front of his girlfriend and now fiance. And to my knowledge, it sounded like she absolutely loved the experience. And uh, of course, you know, other things happened as a, as a result of that. But if you even tried to give the most minute effort into trying to learn how to play the guitar and play at least something in front of a woman. It, it is my personal opinion that will give you some results. I could see that. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll try that soon. <laughs> <laughs> see if it'll work. <laughs> yeah. And in terms of genetics, we talk about this a lot on, the, on this channel, especially like how much do you think musical ability is genetic and how much do you think it's hard work and consistency? So I think that there's two different answers for this. And it's very hard to quantify this sort of thing because, you know, everybody's human brain is completely different in how they and how they process not just music, but also language and being able to process uh, process social abilities Mm -hmm. there's the first category of musicians which i like to call the brute force musicians Mm -hmm. and those musicians are going to uh, get good at now we're just going to use the guitar as an example here 
say that you wanted to learn a bunch of first position chords and just get really good at playing those first position chords, you don't really give any thought to any patterns in music. You really don't examine music theory too much. You're just there to play guitar and you're just there to have a good time. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. Dave Grohl, who is a popular front man of the band Foo Fighters, he doesn't really have a whole lot of uh, information about music theory either. He just likes to do what sounds good. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of very successful musicians who are like that. Now, on the other hand, there are musicians that I think start to get a little bit more into the genetic aspect of it, where not only do they have a fundamental understanding of music theory, but they also get into the realm of having really fantastic audiatic memories. And those audiatic memories can either spawn one of two skill sets, either having relative pitch or perfect pitch. That's interesting. What exactly is audio, audiatic memory? So audiatic memory is the ability to process music in a way that is, that is different based on most people out there. So a good example of that would be um, I'm just going to use myself as an example here. I have an E flat in my head. Like mm -hmm. If I wanted to give someone an E flat, I can recite it from memory with roughly 90 to 95% accuracy. On top of that, when you're getting into this better understanding of music theory, you then start to understand that music has specific patterns. You know, music is a is a full system, and I would argue a very scientifically numbers-based system mm -hmm. that I personally view music as. Like, I view music as primarily two base, uh, two different number-based systems. Mm -hmm. An eight-based number, an eight-number-based system, and a 12-based number system. But it's mm -hmm. mostly an eight-based number-based system. Going back to the music having patterns and everything, some musicians out there are able to listen to the radio and take Don't Stop Believing, for example. And additionally, uh, there's a group out there, The Axis of Awesome, where they have the four chord song. And they display how many of these songs have these four chords inside of them. Mm -hmm. Well, that is very true. Being able to play all these different four chord songs it's another thing to be able to recognize it after hearing it for the first time. Mm -hmm. And that is something, or that's a skill set that I've been able to refine and work on mm -hmm. over the past eight years where if you try, now this is really where audiatic memory really helps out tremendously. Comes into play. What I personally am able to do, I'm able to listen to a radio station, maybe listen to a song that I haven't heard ever and maybe take a song that's been released over the past one or two months, listen to it once, be able to identify that chord progression and be able to play it on the guitar first time without listening to it a second time. That's super talented. <laughs> Thank <laughs> that's, you. That's, that sounds amazing. <laughs> and then, um, you know, your, your brother is also a musician yes. and your dad's also a talented musician. It was your, did your dad um, have that, you know, similar memory? So that's a really interesting question because my dad is a really accomplished musician just by himself. He's been playing guitar for, I think, going on 55 years. Wow. And he has l skill levels on the guitar that I wish I could be able to play. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I just don't have that. But maybe that's also because I haven't necessarily refine that skill he is able to solo over top a particular musical chord progression mm -hmm. and make it sound like you know it's amazing like he he can play a solo without even rehearsing anything mm -hmm. but in terms of having an audiotic memory like my brother is a whole lot better at doing this than i am my brother has perfect pitch and he's able mm -hmm. to say all 12 uh, recite all 12 chromatic tones completely from memory. Mm -hmm. My dad does not have any of that, but that's not to diminish 
his ability as a musician Mm -hmm. because he's just extremely good at what he does. Uh, He does have the ability to sing in a choir and have his own independent voice and being able to control his voice in that way. But Mm -hmm. that's something where my brother and I have capitalized that uh, capitalized on top of that and have refined that a little bit more. Mm -hmm. It's really more or less all three of us have very different talents and skills that we've decided to refine Mm -hmm. over the course of our musical careers. That's awesome. If you could give like a number, this percentage is genetic for musical ability and this percentage is hard work for musical ability, what would you say those numbers would be? It's a really tough question. Mm -hmm. I would say... It's probably widely debated amongst the uh, music community as well, whether it's more genetic or more more hard work based. I would say it's probably 60% genetic and 40% hardworking, which will definitely aggravate uh, a lot of people to a certain extent, but that also shows you why certain people are much better at their craft than others. I mean, mm-hmm. it's it's almost like someone working on a uh, on a paint uh, a painting. You know, some people are just really good at having that perspective inside of their mind of being able to draw it on a canvas, mm-hmm. whereas other people significantly struggle with it. You can absolutely get better at it over time because, of course, practice is going to make perfect. Mm-hmm. But there's just a certain level of of talent that I don't really think that any amount of extreme hard work is really going to get you get to. you there and one of them i'm strongly convinced is perfect pitch mm-hmm. you can i think get somebody almost up to that level but unless if they really really want it unless if they have a very solid understanding of music theory i don't think it is something that is really i don't think it's something that you can really work towards without putting a heavy amount of studying and uh, memorization of orals. That's really what it is. Mm -hmm. A memorization of tones and understanding how certain musical notes relate to other intervals. Right. It's kind of badly explained, but not everybody's going to reach that level of musicianship. Yeah, it's an interesting point you brought up because like as um as someone who's tried the guitar in the past, like I definitely I definitely struggle with it. It was tough for me to like understand the chord progressions and things like that and you you were a good teacher it was just for i feel like the um the average hobbyist like they could work as hard as humanly possible and they can get to the point where they can play a few like red hot chili pepper songs or metallica but they'll never have like the the skill and talent like you or your brother your dad or like a jimmy page have they'll always kind of they'll have like a genetic limit on how good at guitar or you know drums that they can get but they can still work hard and get somewhere yeah it's not like you can't play something that is extremely simple and make it sound really good a really good example of this would be about a girl by nirvana which you can find on their unplugged album it's for the most part two chords and you're going to be switching between the two of them if you really want to try and learn how to play guitar at least get yourself in the mindset of Yes, I absolutely can do this because ev- anybody can get to the point where they can at least play one song pretty efficiently. But that's one of the more simpler songs that's like it, it gets you into the mindset of, OK, I can actually do this. And maybe they want to try and explore other avenues of trying to learn how to play the guitar. Well said. <laughs> <laughs>